Legends, welcome back to the channel where piece by piece we appear to be acquiring the entire Fnatic ecosystem. Today was a pretty cool day because the Australian Postal Service decided it would start working again, therefore I finally received my Club Sport Formula V2 rim, which I ordered so long ago I can't exactly remember when it was. So in a sense this is like an early Christmas present to myself and I thought I'd share it with you guys because it's a great occasion to put this up alongside the other wheel that I use, the R330 with the Universal Xbox Hub and the other wheels and wheel bases I've used in the past such as the T500 RS the uh, Thrustmaster TX, the Logitech G27, and going up and down from there. Now, the reason that this is important is because, because the Club Sport V2 rim, in and of itself, costs about as much as an entire mid-range sim rig, including cockpit. So, it definitely better bring some serious firepower to the table in order to be worthwhile. So that's what we're going to ascertain today, and find out for you guys whether it's going to be worth the investment. Before we move on, Make sure to smash subscribe, give this small channel some support, any like, any comment, it all goes a tremendously long way towards uh, letting the algorithm know that you're interested in this content and so it can spread it out further and wider for more people to see. So without further ado, let's get into the content. So, this room arrived at a pretty good time, just as I was teaching myself into Lagos in the Formula V12. Perfect. The very first thing that struck me about it is kind of how small it is. It's so small that it's kind of cute to be honest and I have fairly large hands so it just kind of gives an extra emphasis and contrast. Um, the other thing that struck me was the amount of rotary encoders and multi-position switches and things that you can use in order to essentially control every facet of the car. So you've got the whole slew of general uh, Xbox controller controls, two toggle switches, you've got these three rotary encoders, You've got a D-pad here, you've got an analog stick here, you've got your two shifters, and you've got two rotary encoders. You can pretty much map everything from traction control through to ABS, through to brake bias, through to just about everything you can conceive of. So that was the first thing that struck me. And uh, yeah, from there on out, let's give the unit a test bash. Now, a lot of you guys normally ask for my Fnatic DD1 settings for this game, so I'll quickly run through them. So if you go into the tuning menu, set up two, use the d-pad to move it around so the steering angle is set to auto force feedback for this car i've got to 85 you can go anywhere from 80 to about 100 if you keep the gain in the game at uh 50 i believe it was uh, shock vibration is at 100 abs is off force effect spring effect and damper effect are all at their default settings of 100 natural damper i have at 50 just to add some extra weight and resistance to the wheel and natural friction i have at five FFB intensity at 100 because I love the raw, uncensored force feedback that you just get directly from games. It's one of the reasons I love the force feedback of this game and R Factor 2. So that about covers that. Uh, you guys know my in-game settings from before, basically gain 50. Uh, low force boost, I have about 10 at the moment. Uh, FX at the default 50 and menu spring strength at 10. So let's move on to the actual test. Alright, so here we are in the Formula V12 at Interlagos with some nicely glitching out tyres. Them AMS too early access bugged, right? <laughs> anyway, this is a great platform for us to test this rim. It's pretty much made for cars like this. Perhaps cars that are slightly more modern, but you know, you get the gist of it. Now, the first thing I noticed as soon as I grabbed this and started using it was that it gives you more visceral, tactile, direct control over the car. Now, I'm sure some of that is to do with the fact that it's smaller, but the force feedback actually comes through as if it's been dialed up or as if it's like higher quality. I'm getting more detail, perhaps it's being diffused less through all the component trees such as the, the universal hub not being a part of this, um, like it is part of my other wheel. But two things started to eventuate that I kind of didn't expect. The first was that I was actually quicker. <laughs> I didn't expect that at all, like, I kind of got this as a novelty purchase just to have it. I was not expecting it to give me tents. The other one, I guess a little more expected, is that it made me more consistent. I'm probably not going to reflect that now in this lap, now that I've said it. Uh, especially since I'm just warming up. But, uh, take my word for it, it's made me more consistent and it's made me marginally faster. Now. These are not things I expected. Again, this was kind of a luxury purchase I got just for kicks because, you know, I'm locked away like all of you are and I just kind of wanted to have fun with the peripheral. But yeah, it's actually given me a lot more tactile and visceral 
improvement that I than I expected. And the, the rim that I'm coming from is the R330. So it's not a low-end rim. It's, you know, fairly costly, just like the Club Sport uh, V2 here is. But it is an oval rim, and I guess this gives you more tactile control over open-wheel-style cars. Now, the other thing I noticed was this amazing uh, shift indicator. Because I keep this room quite dark when I'm not shooting, when the blue kicks in, it pretty much just like burns my retinas out, and I know exactly when it's the right time to shift. It's quite welcome, actually. I really enjoy it. It's about the visual equivalent of this car's insane engine when it hits high rev. <laughs> So, I mean, on the whole, not much more to say. You've got the two rotary encoders, as I was saying. You've got the multi-position switches, got all the buttons you can possibly need. And, I mean, I'm, I'm personally very happy with it so far. It's I've gotten more out of it than I expected, bearing in mind that, yes, I probably am in a slightly different price range when it comes to sim gear to the average sim racer. But if you do have the excess, if you do have the, what is it, 689 odd Australian dollars to spend on a rim, I mean, I would say it's probably better than my entire Thrustmaster T500 setup, so in that sense, yeah, I guess it is worth it. But it really depends on where you're coming from and what you're hoping to get. If your budget is a thousand dollars or less than a thousand and you're hoping to get a sim rig, then obviously wasting it on a on a rim like this is an idiotic thing to do. But if you are a part of the Fnatic ecosystem, you may just enjoy it like I am. Anyway, now that I'm losing my flow here, uh, thank you guys for joining me. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope it was educational. I'm really enjoying this thing thus far. I've just had it for the one day. If anything new comes up, I'll be sure to mention it in future videos. In the meantime, make sure to smash subscribe, show this small channel some love, and we'll see you guys next time.